Ball handling and spinning. That's what we're going to go over today. Now, you know there's basic fundamentals of ball handling, and there's also creative fundamentals. And that's what I'm going to show you today. The basic fundamentals, the creative fundamentals. You're going to have a lot of fun doing these drills. They're a lot of fun. Why did I do them? To break the monotony of what I was doing in the gym all day long. When I was nine years old, between nine and ten years old, I was in the drugstore in Clemson, South Carolina. And of course, I had my basketball. And I started spinning the ball just like this. And a friend of mine came in with a bunch of his friends. And he said, I tell you what, he said, I bet you can't spin that ball on your finger for an hour. And uh, of course, some of my friends, go ahead, Pete, you can do it. Show them you can do it. And I said, well, uh, OK, I'll bet you $5. So a bunch of kids got around, and we were in the drugstore, and I started spinning the ball, you see. I was just spinning it on this one finger. I spun it on this finger, and this is called fanning the ball. I spun it on this finger for about three or four or five minutes, and all of a sudden, the nail started to wear down, and it started to blister, and I started to get a little blood from that finger. And I noticed this guy, and he was laughing. They were laughing back and forth. But you know what I did? I just changed fingers. That's all I did. You see, he wasn't laughing after that. And after about 10 more minutes, I changed to this finger. You see? And then after about 10 more minutes, I changed to this one. And then I went to this hand, see? And I went back. But I kept it going. I just kept it going for one hour. And I got my $5. But it took me $15 to fix my hands back up. So don't do that, but it's good because when I was a kid, that's all I wanted to do. Whatever I could do with a basketball, dribbling it or ball handling, spinning, I wanted to do. And that's what this video is all about. The skills of learning how to handle the ball, different drills, fundamental basic drills, and creative fundamental drills. So get ready, get your ball, and let's do our homework. The first basic ball handling drill I want to show you, it's a warm-up drill. Not only is it a warm-up drill, it's a, uh, a good stretching drill for the entire body to start into this ball handling. So you get your ball right now and let's go into it. It's called squeeze the banana. Now, it got that name because what you want to do is you want to extend your arms completely out like this over your head. You want to lock your elbows. Now, the big thing about doing this, these drills is to execute them. Don't try to cheat. Just execute them. And as you do them repetitiously more and more, you'll get better at it. So don't forget, arms out like this. The ball, of course, is in the right hand or the left hand. Your elbows are locked. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the ball, literally squeeze the ball out of my hand like this, back and forth, just like this. And what is this doing? Well, I'm telling you what it's doing. It is really strengthening my fingers, my fingertips. It's really strengthening my wrist. You see, I'm not tapping the ball. I'm absolutely squeezing it out. Now, if you did this for a, a minute, two to three minutes, your arms will just cave in. Try it sometime. Try to do it for three minutes. Just squeeze back and forth. Lock your arms out. That's called squeeze the banana. Do it. Next drill on tap is just that, the tap drill. Now, where does that come from? Well, again, what you want to do is you want to warm up, OK? But you want to strengthen your fingertips while you're doing that. Because when you strengthen your fingertips, how's that going to come into play? When you dribble a basketball, when you catch the basketball, when you pass the basketball, and when you shoot the basketball. You've got to have strong fingertips. You have strong, a strong grip on the ball. You have strong wrists. And that's what these ball handling drills do. They will strengthen you. They'll make your hands that much quicker. You'll have better reaction time on the court with your hands, with your body. You'll be more coordinated. So the tap drill, same different, just like the uh, squeeze the banana. We're going to extend our elbows out, but this time we're going to tap the ball back and forth. See, we're just going to tap it back and forth like this. Elbows are extended now. It's very important that you lock those elbows. Now, the object of this drill, we're going to go all the way down like this, tapping the ball with the elbows extended all the way to this area, and then back up. Now, what happens? Normally, what will happen is this. Let's start to do it, and I'll show you what will happen. OK, we start tapping. Elbows extended. Let's go down now. Keep it going back and forth. Elbows extended. That's right. That's right. Keep going. Keep going. What happened? What happened? Tell me. You know what happened. You lost the ball. Where would you lose it? You lost it right when you got to here. It came out of hands. You know why you lost it? I'm going to tell you why. Because your hands, they're not strengthened enough. They're not, you gotta have strong hands, you gotta have strong fingertips. That's why these drills will strengthen your fingertips. So let's get back up. Try to control it now. Let's tap it. 
Okay, elbows locked out. That's right. Tap it back and forth. All the way down. Tap it. Keep it in there. Oh, it's tough right in here. This is where it's tough. Now come back up. That's right. Come back up. That's right. Let's go down one more time. Come on. I know it hurts. It hurts me too. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. Keep it down here. That's right. Try to do it right here. Boy, that's tough. Come on back up now. Oh, this is fun, isn't it? Yeah, right. Why'd you quit then? Don't quit. Keep going. The tap drill. Boy, that'll strengthen your arms, your shoulder. It'll strengthen your hands, your fingertips. It'll give you good quick movement in between. It's a good warm-up drill. First we had squeeze the banana, then the tap drill. Now we're gonna do the pendulum swing. Again, the pendulum swing is a drill that's just gonna strengthen our fingertips. It's gonna strengthen our fingertips. That's what we wanna do. It's a warm-up drill we wanna strengthen. Now what do we do? Here's what we're gonna do. Take the ball in one hand. Remember, this is like a suction cup. Make sure you got that hand over it. Just like the tentacles of an octopus. You want that hand right over it like this. Now, turn your hand over. We're gonna go back and forth and really push it into that, that cup. Push it in, see? Push it, and then just lower. Just a pendulum swing, see? A pendulum swing, back and forth, see? It looks simple. It looks real simple until you get higher and higher, see? Then you gotta have more control. You gotta maintain more control, see? That's it. Keep going. That's it, way up, way up. Get it in there. That's right. The pendulum swing, do it. Next drill we're going to talk about is the flip roll. Now, we just took you through some strengthening drills. Squeeze a banana, tap drill, the pendulum swing. So you should be warmed up at this point. Now, what we're going to get into now is the reaction part, the quickness part, the coordinating part of the drills. These ball handling drills are creative, and they're also going to make you quicker. They're going to make you faster. You're going to have to have more concentration but they're also going to affect your game a great deal because they're going to be positive things for your game if you can learn how to do these drills. The first one is called the flip roll. What you want to do, I was taught this by Gator Rivers who plays with the Harlem Globetrotters. He taught me this little drill, and I couldn't do it at the beginning either. It didn't take me very long to get it, but once you get it, it's a good drill from a quickness standpoint and a coordinating standpoint. Take the ball in your hand like this, and what you want to do is flip the ball over and make it come over the back of your hand. See? Over the back of your hand. Flip it, over the back. Flip it, over the back. And then you bring your left hand in. As it's flipping over that hand, you bring your left hand in. It's going over here, and then you have to flip your hand over and catch it. You see? So it's here, here, and catch it. See? Here, here, and catch it. See? Here, bring that left hand in and catch it. See? Catch it. Back this way, catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. The flip roll. See? Real simple. Once you learn it. It's a good drill. Boy, if you did this, take this to your daddy. Say, look, Dad, I want to show you the flip roll. <laughs> Do that for him. That's positive. Hey, let me tell you, that's a good conditioning drill. It's called around the world. It's a ball handling drill. It's for coordination. It's for hand quickness. It's for stretching you out. It's a great warm-up drill. You can do it to music. It's an exhausting drill. Good conditioning drill. But first off, you have, must understand that these drills are to make you handle the ball better so that when you're dribbling it, when you're catching it, when you're passing it, when you're spinning, whatever you have to do, when you're grabbing the ball off the board, you'll be able to handle the ball that much better. That's what these drills are for. So remember, the first thing we're gonna do here on this around the world is around the head, okay? Around the head. First thing we're gonna do is go around just like this. Now, if you're five, six, seven years old, get you a small ball, a real little ball. Take the ball, go around, bring your left hand behind, catch it like this, bring your right arm over, see? Bring it back, just like this. That's right, just like that. Don't go above the head, that's cheating. Don't cheat. Just execute, okay? Go behind, catch. 
Now, when you learn to do that, then you want to just start passing the ball. Passing the ball behind, see? Passing it behind. Now, my left hand becomes like an electronic eye, okay? It's my eye. I, I lose sight of the ball here. I'm passing it, and I've got to be able to feel that ball. I know it's coming. It's just uh, intuition, whatever you want to call it. It's there. I know it's there, all right? So just pass it like this. That's right. Back and forth. See? That's it. Just keep going. Now, what we want to do is we want to just get a little bit faster. Keep that head stationary and go all the way around like this. That's right. That's it right there. That's around the top of the head, part one of Around the World. Hey, it's fun. Around the World, part two, around the waist. This is the second part. We went around the head, okay? We learned how to do that. Now we're going to learn how to go around the waist. Of course, you've done this before, but maybe you haven't done it as intensified as you should do it because this is a great ball handling drill when you get all the way through it to warm you up and everything else and especially condition you to make your hands quicker, to make them quicker. You're really going to feel this in your arms and your shoulders. If you did this drill for three straight minutes, you'd be laying on the floor. That's how difficult it is. If you do it as hard as you can, that's where you'd be on the floor, unless you're in tremendous condition. I know I'd be on the floor, okay? So maybe you wouldn't, but I would. Now, what you want to do is, again, we're going to take the ball, we're going to go around, bring that left hand behind, catch it, come back around, just like this. That's how you learn to do it, see? Now, if you're too small, then get a real small basketball. You don't have to have a big basketball. Get a small little basketball, okay? Do the same thing. Even get a tennis ball. If you're only three years old, get a tennis ball and just come around like that, okay? Get a tennis ball, just like this. That's right. All right, now, what we want to do is just basically start throwing the ball, see? Throwing the ball. See how I'm throwing it in front? Throwing it in back? Throwing it. Why? Because when you throw it, then you're going to start to get speed. You're going to get momentum on the drill, okay? On the drill, see? We're going to start doing it just like this, see? Now, when you do this right, and when you're in condition, when you're in shape, you should be able to do, this is one, two, three. You should be able to do 60 to 75 repetitions around your waist in 30 seconds. That's right, 30 seconds. Hey, it's a killer, but I'm tell you what, if you can do 75 of these around your waist, I can tell you one thing, you can handle the basketball, okay? So let's do it a little faster now, ready? All right, we're gonna start doing around. If you're tired already, so am I. Let's keep going, ready? Let's, let's, let's do it for a few seconds, ready? Let's go, come on. Okay, that's around the waist, part two of around the world. Hey, it's fun, it's conditioning drill, break on through, you can do it. Now we went around the head and we went around the waist and that's around the world, around the head, around the waist and you're probably saying, hey, I'm tired. Is there any more to this? Well, there is. There's two more parts to this, and we're going to get through them, because you're going to like it. Hey, you've got to break through. You've got to pass through that pain barrier. That's what this is all about, is to make you be able to handle the ball better. See, the more repetitious you are, the more repetitious you are when you handle the basketball, the better you're going to become. It's like anything else. If you read a book 500 times, and I'll read it one time, who's going to know more about the book? You are. That's, that's, that's just common knowledge. There's no shortcut to success. It's called hard work and commitment. And this is what you got to do with this drill. So let's get into it right now. We're going to put our toes together like this, our feet together, just like this. The object of this is going around, right between, our, around our calf. From the knee to the ankle, we're going to go around in this fashion. You're going to bend over. Now look, look at the hand, same way as around the waist and around the head. Just pass it, pass it around. Make contact, make contact, then let go. Again, if you're a real small kid, Okay, if you're six, seven years old, get a small ball. Get a tennis ball, get a baseball. And do this right here, see? Real slow, see? Don't try to do it fast in the beginning, okay? Now, same thing. We want to go around as fast as we can with this. So let's start building up steam, okay? Come on. Let's just keep going now. That's right. Keep going. OK, 
Okay, that's Around the Legs, part three. Hey, you can do it. Okay, we're down to the last part. It's called In and Out, In and Out, In and Out, In and Out. Now, this is a coordinating part of the drill. It's also the quickness part of the drill. It's going to involve your feet and your legs and your arms and your hands. It's going to require you concentration, conditioning, quickness. It's going to make you a better ball handler. In the fourth quarter, when you get real tired on the court, that's what these drills do. They condition you so that you'll be able to catch the ball. You'll be able to grab that last rebound. You'll be able to get that shot off quicker than you thought you could. Okay? That's what this is for. All right, let's go down here and see. Now, what I'm going to do is just like this, we're going to go around just like the third part go around here like this but there's one difference one time when we come around one time around the legs we're gonna drop back this right foot drop it back now we're gonna go through like this the left leg bring the right foot back up now we're gonna go all the way around again now we're gonna drop the left foot drop the left foot back go through come back up with it all the way around let's go over it again Right foot's back, get it back, that's right. Go through, bring it back up, all the way around. Drop that left foot back, that's right, drop it back, good. Back up, all the way around, drop the right back. See, we got this in and out movement, see? In and out, see, in and out, see? See how I'm leaning, see how I've got rhythm, see how I've got harmony, coordination. Quickness is going to come in a second, okay? In and out. Around the world. Around the top of the head. Around the waist. Around the legs. In and out around the ankles. All right? Hey, it's a great drill, great conditioning drill. It's a fun drill. You can do it with time. Don't forget, get 60 or 70 of these in, in 30 seconds. Build up to a minute, to two minutes, to three minutes. It's tough to do, but you can do it. The pistol P draw. Now this is a drill which requires a great deal of anticipation, a great deal of hand quickness, and you can use your friend, your, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, whoever you want, but it's a fun drill to do. Now I'm going to call in a friend of mine, Daryl's going to come on in here. Now let me explain and set this up for you. Now the pistol peat draw took place when uh, my dad developed this. Uh, he used to, I used to always watch gun smoke when I was a small child. And, and they always have those Western where the guy would come up and say, okay, you draw, no, you draw, and they'd try to beat the draw, and whoever could do that would win. Well, my dad developed a drill out of this for hand quickness, and the drill is this. Daryl just stands like this, stands very straight like this. He's going to keep his hands to his side, and I'm going to put the ball right at the base of his back right here, okay? Right at, right at the base, right here, right below his shoulder blades. Now, the object of the drill is for him to clap his hands in front Clap them in front, bring them back, and catch the ball, okay? But the thing is, he doesn't know when I'm going to drop the ball. You see, that's where the draw comes in. He's got to anticipate. He's got to have hand quickness. He's got to concentrate, and that's what this drill is all about. This is a fun drill. Watch Daryl. Now, whatever you do, Daryl, don't listen to me, okay? Whatever you do, don't listen to me. You just always get ready. Have your hands ready and get ready. Okay, that's good. See, I won that one, you see? So we'll, we'll just don't... <laughs> You don't have to have them on your side. Don't listen to me, Daryl. Don't listen to me, Daryl. See, you can't, this is really fun. This is, believe me, you, you just, this is great. And stand up straight, though. Stand, that's right. Don't listen to me, Daryl. Don't listen. Just, 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 that's good. Okay. He's doing real good. He's, he's, you know, he's been in boot heel four times already. Okay, we're going right here again. We'll try it two more times, okay? See, he's really getting quick. See that? Oh, he's, he's, he's good. Almost, he almost got that one. We'll try it one more time for Daryl. Yes, sir, Daryl, you're doing a good job. Okay, this is the last time we're gonna do it. Oh, he tried to do it. Now Daryl's gonna try it on me. Daryl likes to try this on me. He really enjoys this. No, no, that's too, that's too low now. Just put it up here in the back there, that's right. 
Thank you, Daryl. It's been real fun with you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So you see, that's the pistol P draw. Now, if you're real quick, if you can anticipate, if you can concentrate, then you won't go into boot hill. Now we're going to get into the drills that are really going to be two parts. First, the coordinating part, and then the quickness part. Because you have to have coordination, and you have to have quickness. The first drill is the ricochet. I developed this in the 50s. That's when it was developed, in the 50s. And all of these drills, this is what, this is called homework basketball, and this is where you can do this all at home. You don't have to have a gym. You can do it at home. Now, the ricochet, here's how you do it. Stand with your feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart, okay? A little bit more than shoulder width apart. You want to take the ball. You want your legs to be straight. You want to lock your knees, okay? You don't want to bend. You want to lock your knees just like this, okay? <laughs> because this is a dangerous drill, all right? It gets more dangerous as we do the other parts of it. But first, you want to take the ball. You want to throw the ball down at about a 45-degree angle, and you want to catch it behind you just like that, okay? Throw it down. Catch it. Get your ball now. Come on. Do it. Try it right there. That's right. Your mama, don't worry. She'll take care of you. Ready? Good. Let's do it again. See? This is just the coordination part of it. Can you do that? Don't bend over. Don't go like this. Don't do that. Stay straight up. Throw the ball. Let the ball work for you. Don't let your body work. Let the ball work. Okay? This is called the ricochet. It's coordination. You throw it through. You don't throw it through hard. You just throw it through where you can catch it. Keep bringing it around. Keep doing that. The ricochet. Hey, it's fun. Hey, have your family. When you're eating, you eat real quick. So you just eat real quick. Get up as your family's still eating. Get the ball and say, hey, Mom, hey, Dad, let me show you this new drill I got. It's called the ricochet. Just keep eating, would you? There you go. Look at that. See? You can do it any time you want. Just do it. Do this drill. Oh, it's fun. The ricochet. Next drill in this part series called the ricochet is the ricochet rhythm. Now that you've already learned how to coordinate yourself by throwing the ball through, catching it, and bringing it around, now we want to throw it through and we want to throw it back. Throw it through, throw it back. Throw it through and back. Real slow. Catch it, throw it through. Catch it, throw it through. Real slow. This is the second part of the coordination. You have to do the coordinating part first before you do the quick part. Because if you don't do the coordinating part, you're not going to be able to do the quick part. So learn how to do this. Back and forth. As you get better, then start to speed it up a little bit. That's the rhythm ricochet. Do it to rhythm, okay? Now we just learned the rhythm, ricochet, and we learned the ricochet. That's the coordinating part of the drill. Now we're gonna learn the quickness part, the reaction part, when you gotta really get those hands back. Quick, quick, you gotta get those hands back so that you can go ahead and get the ball when it's back there. This is where you gotta be really quick with your hands. Let's spread your feet apart, just like this. Make sure that your legs are extended and locked, okay? Now I'm gonna take the basketball, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna throw it through kinda hard. I'm gonna work up, I'm gonna build the momentum up where I just go back and forth back and forth, back and forth, and at the end of the drill, I'm gonna throw this ball as hard as I possibly can through my legs, which might be 50, 60 miles an hour, the speed of it. So you really gotta have really quick hands, okay? Let's start doing it right now. <laughs> you can really hurt yourself with this kind of drill, so be very careful. I don't want your mama writing me a letter, okay? Please, be careful when you do this drill. Just keep your legs extended, just like this, okay? This is fun, isn't this fun? Get your, get your ball, okay? Are you on the couch now? Or are you laid out? Okay, just like me. All right, ready? Build it up. Watch 
the hands. Watch the hands. Can you see the hands move? That is quick. That's the bullet ricochet. Hey, it's fun. Do it. But don't do it until you learn the coordinating part. Now we went over the ricochet, the rhythm ricochet, the bullet ricochet. Now we're going to go into the inverted ricochet. Now this is a great coordination drill. And what you have to do is, this is also a drill as far as stretching out your, your thigh muscles. It's a good drill to stretch out your back area and everything else. And it's a very difficult drill to learn. But you can learn it if you just keep on trying it. Just keep doing it. Now, the object of this drill is, again, just like you're doing the, the regular ricochet, the only difference is you're going to come from back here, okay, and you're going to stretch way out, and you're going to throw that ball from, the beha from back behind your shoulders through your legs and catch it here, okay? Now, it's a, it's a pretty difficult drill, okay? So I'm going to do about five or six for you. Now, watch it. Now, you notice I'm, I'm bending my knees out. I've got to really bend and stretch to get that ball through and it comes right back up to me you see through keep going it's a great drill to stretch those muscles in your leg stretch your back it's a good warm-up drill but it's also a great coordination drill inverted ricochet it'll stretch you out and it's good for you to do the space catch the space catch the coordinating part of it the quick part of it first of all let's do the coordinating part let's think of yourself right now you're standing in some uh, cement you've been standing there all day and it's just dry now you can't move your feet can you? of course you can't <laughs> okay now that you're in that position think of it that way because I don't want you to move now get your ball in front of you now I want to throw the ball up in the air all right I want to coordinate myself to throw the ball up in the air and catch it behind me. That's all it is. It's called the space kick. Throw it up, catch it. Just like that. Come back. Let's do it. Try it again. Go ahead. Go, go get the ball. I know it went under the couch. Go ahead. Go get it. Okay. Ready? Do it again. Good. Just like that. One more. Keep going. See? That's right. See, this is the coordinating part of the drill right here. It looks simple. It looks real simple. But it's not. It's not, is it? You just can't seem to stand still, huh? But this is what you want to do. You want to be able to throw the ball up, coordinate yourself to throw the ball up and catch it behind you without moving, okay? That is the space catch first part. The second part of this space catch is the rhythm space catch. Now we're going to stand the same way, okay? And we're going to go back and forth, back and forth without moving. Remember, you're in cement. You can't move. This is the coordinating part of this drill. You don't want to move. You want to get it to where you can just sit there and throw the ball back and forth, back and forth. Back, forth. It'll come back. You don't see it? Come right over your head. Back, forth. Just like this. Don't move. Learn to do it. Now, if you got to move in the beginning, fine. Go ahead and move, okay? I don't want to make this because you got to learn how to do it first. If you got to move to get the ball, move. But the object of the drill is to stay stationary. Also, don't bend your back. Whatever you do, don't bend your back. What'll happen? Well, let's see what'll happen. If I'm like this and I bend my back, it's going to go off my back, okay? So we don't want to bend our back, all right? Remember, up, back, up, back. Back. The rhythm, space catch. Hey, you can do it. Just keep practicing. Now, we've learned how to do the coordinating part of it, okay? Now we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to take the ball and throw it up high, higher and higher, because then I want to run under it. I want to make sure that I can catch it. Now, the ball is going to be coming down a lot faster than when I throw it up. So you got to run under it, it's, and you got to be careful, because if you don't, the ball hits you in the head, or you might break your nose looking up at there. So you gotta, you gotta really know what you're doing, okay? We're gonna start kinda, kinda slow. You won't be able to see the ball going way up, but uh, just by the time, you'll see that it takes, it takes a long time for it to get back. And you can move on this one now. You wanna get under. 
Sim. See, sometimes I throw it so high. I, well, this is the highest I've ever thrown it. I believe me, I, I didn't think I was going to throw it that high. Okay. Man, that's the highest I've ever thrown it. Hey, you can do the same thing. Believe me, you can do it. Now we went over the coordinating part of that drill called the space catch, the space catch rhythm. Then throw the ball way up, try to run under it. Now we're going to do something different. I'm going to throw the ball up in the air, okay? I'm going to let the ball bounce and I'm going to run under it, okay? And then I'm going to throw it up as high as I can. I'm going to let it go behind me, let it bounce and catch it. That's the coordinating part. We got to get these, this coordination down before you do the quickness part. So here we go. The ball is up, we're going to let it come in front, I'm going to run under and catch it. Looks very simple. Let's try it again. Throw it up, let it bounce once, go under it, catch it. Okay? Now I'm going to throw it up, let it bounce behind, catch it. One more time. Let the ball bounce behind and catch it. Now that is the space catch with coordination. Now we did the space catch, the coordination part of it. We did the space rhythm catch, the coordination part of it. Now we're gonna do the quickness part. Now where does the quickness come in? Okay, I'm gonna throw the ball up in the air and I'm gonna use my hands, I'm gonna clap my thighs. One time, catch the ball. Twice, catch the ball. Three times, I'm gonna go all the way to 10 for you. You have to be really quick when you do this because the ball is barreling down on your head. Now you can run out of this, you can, you can, wherever the ball is, you can run under it, okay? You're not in that cement anymore, but make sure that you, when you throw it up like this, you throw it up, you clap, and you catch it behind, just like this, okay? Let's go to 10, ready? One time, clap. Catch it, get under it, twice. Catch it, get under it, three times. That's three. That's four. Five. Six. Seven. Nine, count now, count. That's 10. That's the space, clap. You can do it, it's fun. The last part of the space catch is called the Big Dipper. This is the hardest part of this drill, and it's really the, the most fun, but you gotta be very careful when you do this particular type of drill. Now, let's get right into it. I'm gonna take the ball, and as you well know, on the space catch, which we just did, we just did this. Now, we're gonna take the ball, I'm gonna throw the ball up in the air, I'm going to go between my legs and catch the ball from behind. Now, that is a real difficult drill. Now, you got to move. When you throw that basketball up, you got to see where it is, and then you got to move under it, see? Because you got to get enough space. you got to get enough space from your back down to your posterior to get out of the way. Or the ball will hit your back, it'll hit your behind, and you don't want that. You want just enough space where you can catch that ball. So, we're going to take this ball like this, we're going to throw it up, and we're going to catch it like that. Now. When you put your hands through, when you put your hands through, be very careful because that ball is going to come down and you don't want it to hit your thumb. So when you get your hands through, make sure they're flat. Make sure your hands are flat, just like this. You want your hands to go through like this, not like this, but flat, just like that. You want to have that pocket. So when the ball comes down, you're catching it just like that. Catch it just like that. Now, that is called the big difference. It's a very difficult drill, but it's a great coordination drill because you got to move forward, you got to move backwards, you got to know where you are, you got to know where the ball is. Hey, it's a fun drill to do. Put that into your repertoire of ball handling. The pretzel, a great coordinating drill, 
a great quickness drill. Now let's set it up. Right now, you're gonna bend over, just like this. You're gonna bend over. We're gonna place the ball in our right hand. We're gonna put it right between our legs, just like this. Our left hand goes behind our left leg. You grab the ball, okay? You got it? Right hand in front, left hand behind. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a figure eight. That's why it's called the pretzel, because I'm gonna let the ball go. My right hand's gonna go behind. My left hand's gonna come in front and catch the ball. See, it's gonna be suspended in the air, watch. Real easy. Now that's the coordinating part of the drill. Then you wanna just take your time and add a little speed to it, a little more quickness to it. The pretzel, it's a great drill of coordination and quickness. And the more you do it, the more you practice it, the quicker you get with it. The walking pretzel. Now we just did the stationary pretzel for coordination and hand quickness. Now we're gonna get into the walking pretzel. Now the only difference is, is that you're gonna be walking and you're gonna be doing a figure eight through your legs, okay? So let's get right into it. Now let's watch. All right, I'm gonna put my left foot forward, just like this. I'm gonna take the ball through, catch it with my left hand, like this. Take a right step, back through on the inside. Another step, back through, inside. Back through, keep going, just like that. See, I'm gonna walk in. Okay, let's do it slow again. walking pretzel. You'll like it. The running pretzel. Now we did the stationary pretzel. We did the walking pretzel. Now we're going to do the running pretzel. Same way, same position. But what you're going to do is this. Remember that all these drills they're to improve your quickness, improve your coordination, make you concentrate. You see, you have to concentrate. If you don't concentrate, then you won't play instinctively out on the court. You won't know what's going on. You won't be able to break down concepts that you get into, involved in. Like sometimes your coach says, why didn't you roll? I didn't know, coach. I didn't know. Well, you see, you're not thinking instinctively. You got to be able to break down these concepts. These drills will make you concentrate, make you think better so that you'll be better on the court. Now, let's go over it again. Just gonna go through like that, but we're gonna run and do it, okay? Let's do a few. Whew. The running pretzel. Hey, it's tough, it's exhausting. It's a conditioning drill. You should do that up and down the court, back and forth. You'll see that your ball handling skills will improve tremendously by just doing that. Now we just got through doing the pretzel, okay? The pretzel, the stationary pretzel. Now we're gonna do another type of pretzel drill. It's called the seesaw. Have you ever been out on the playground? You ever seen the seesaw go back and forth? I'm sure when you were a kid you rode that and so did I. But with this seesaw, all you need is one person. That's you, that's all you need on this. So let's, let me show you how to do it, okay? We're gonna take the ball right here. We're gonna place it behind us just like this. Hands are behind. All right. Now, I'm going to throw the ball through, get my hands around, and catch it. All right? I'm going to throw it back through and catch it. See, see my knees? See the little seesaw movement I'm having? Up and back. 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 That's called the seesaw. That's the coordinating part of it. Now, let's do the quickness part. We're gonna do this a little bit quicker now, okay? A little bit quicker, all right? Up and back. Let's just keep going now.
the seesaw. Use it. Balance. Coordination. Quickness. Hey, it's a great ball handling drill. Now we're going to go into a drill called the knee clap. The knee clap. My dad developed this drill. He showed me how to do it. It took me a while to be able to get quick enough hands to be able to do this. But it's a great drill for hand quickness. You must have quick hands, especially when you play basketball. Now, these drills that I'm doing, you can do them at any time, at any place. You don't have to go in the gym. You can do them at home. You can do them in a the bathroom. You can do them anywhere you want. You can do these types of drills. And they're great drills as far as your coordination, your concentration, confidence. Look, I'm only here for one purpose. I'm here to teach you how to have a little extra edge over your opponent, over the person. You see, when I used to go different places, if I wasn't playing basketball, I would think that someone else was. Someone in L.A. or Boston or New York was playing basketball, so I said, hey, what am I doing? I got to get out there and play. If you want that scholarship, if you want to make your high school team, if you want to get to the top level of success in the NBA, there's only 250-odd players playing professional basketball in the world, and they're right here in the United States, okay? It's a specified situation. You just can't go out and play 14 sports and expect to play basketball in college and pro. You can't do it anymore. There's too many kids that are making it a special case. That's all they're doing. I'm here to encourage you, to give you that little extra edge. So let's get into it right now. You're gonna take the ball, you're gonna place it, you're gonna bend over just like this, you're gonna place the ball behind your knees, just like this. Now you can just hold this with one finger, two fingers, you can hold with your hand, whatever you wanna do. But the object is to let the ball drop. I'm just gonna let the ball drop, just like that, let it drop. I'm gonna get my hands away and let it drop. Now, let's pretend I have the ball here. I'm gonna let the ball go, I'm gonna clap my hands in front. I gotta get that ball. When? Before it hits the ground. You gotta have, this is the quickest drill that you're gonna have for your hands. It's called the knee clap. Now, so we're gonna go back here again. We're gonna drop the ball, clap the hands in front and catch it. Now, this is what's gonna happen to most of you. You're gonna take this, you're gonna let go of it, watch. And you're gonna catch it on the first bounce. That's good. Hey, that's good. Catch it on the first bounce, good. Like that, okay? But then, keep doing it. The more you do it, the more repetitious you are, you're gonna get quicker and quicker. Now, let's go over it. This is how it's supposed to be done. A knee clap. This drill here will give you that extra edge. up on a Saturday morning, did you ever hear your dad say, hey, John, Bill, Dave, come on down to the garage. I want you to sweep it out. Well, my dad did that to me when I was just your age, okay? And I tell you what, I didn't want to go down there, but I did. And I'd get down there, and he'd have me sweep out the garage. They'd take the furniture out that they stored in there, and I'd sweep it all out, and then sweep all the, the, the lawnmower grass uh, coverings that was on there all out of the garage and stuff. But I also had fun with it. Why? Because, see, at that particular point in my life, I was 10 years old, and I was trying to learn how to spin the basketball. And I couldn't do it. I was so frustrated. I couldn't take the ball and just get it up on my finger and keep it there. It kept falling off. So my dad came to me one day, and he says, Pete, when you threw that broom, I want you to start balancing on your finger. I said, why is that? He said, just do as I say. Just balance that broom on your finger. So I learned to try to balance this broom. And I put it on my index finger, just like this. I'd let go, and I'd just start balancing it, see? I want to get as soft, I want this to stay right there. Now, when I first started doing it, I was all over the place, you see? But you should be really balanced when you do this, so you really don't have to do that. And that's, you're saying, well, how did that help you spin? Well, that's what this section's about, spinning, spinning the basketball. So here we are, we're gonna take the ball here. You can also learn to do it by taking your finger like this and learn how to balance that ball on your finger, see? Learn how to balance that ball on your finger, just like that. You see, once you can learn how to balance it, then you can take it and you spin it. Now, I don't care whether you spin it this way or this way. If you're left-handed, you're going to spin it that way. If you're right-handed, you're going to spin it this way. Some people spin it right-handed that way. I don't care. Whatever spin it is, 
but you got to stay after it. Just keep going like this. Just keep putting it on. Just keep putting it on. And finally, after a while, if you can, depends on how, how long you do it, the ball is going to stay on. See? It's going to stay on. Now, once it's on, you have what's called fanning. Now, this is tough because most kids will knock it off. When you fan the basketball, you want to barely touch the ball. You hear the sound. Listen. But I'm barely touching that basketball. You see? Barely touching. All right. Now, once it's on, once you got it spinning, well, you can change fingers. See? You can do a little spider change. A little spider change just like that. Keep that ball spinning and just go back and forth like that. See? On those fingers. Now, you might want to take it like this, and you might want to change fingers like that. See? Back and forth like this. Just like that. See? Back and forth. You might want to take it and maybe put on this knuckle and then back down this knuckle, back, back on the finger, like that. Now that is how you can learn to spin the basketball. It's a whole lot of fun. And it'll really build your confidence. That's what you need. You need encouragement and you need confidence when you learn to spin the basketball. Hey, it sure has been fun being here with you today to do this ball handling video. I had a lot of fun and I hope you had fun too. It was a lot of work and I understand that, but I want to tell you something. There's three things that I want to leave you with, possibly four. The first one is dedication. Dedication to ball handling. You have to be dedicated. What comes out of dedication? Hard work. You have to practice and practice and practice. That's how you will improve yourself. That's how you get better. The second D is desire. You must have desire. 
from within, to want to break through that pain barrier. When you're frustrated, when you say, no, I don't want to play anymore, that's when you play. When you say, I don't want to go another step, that's when you do another step. When you say, I don't want to do that pretzel anymore, that's when you do it 10 times more. You break through that frustration, that pain level. And the third thing, of course, you have dedication and desire, discipline. All of it, it takes discipline. Discipline, maintain discipline. Get up in the morning and go over these drills. The last thing I want to tell you is this. Of course, I want to thank the Tiger Tykes who came here today because, hey, boy, it took me back some memories when I was four years old all the way to I was 12 years old. The Tiger Tykes, it's amazing what they can do with the basketball. But that's what the three Ds are all about. What you saw them do was dedication and discipline and desire. And the last thing, it took commitment. You see, every one of those kids and myself, it took commitment to ball handling, to learn how to handle the ball like that. And what does that build in you? We've already been over it. It builds confidence. I'm here to encourage you. I want you to know that you can become the best ball handler that you want to be. And you can maybe have a dream one day to get a scholarship in college and maybe even play on the pro level. It was a dream for me, but I realized it. And maybe you can realize it too. So don't forget commitment and do your homework. like a winner in your official Pistol Pete's homework basketball t-shirt. Look your best. Feel your best. Be a part of the Pistols team as you wear this one-of-a-kind t-shirt. The logo sporting Pistol Pete's legendary floppy socks not only identifies you as a serious student of the game, but it will also help remind you to keep the fun in the fundamentals of basketball. Let the Pistol help you with your homework because nobody knows today who will be a legend tomorrow.
To order your very own Pistol Pete t-shirt, send $9.95 plus $1 for postage and handling to Pistol Pete t-shirts. Post Office Box 80089, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 